Hello friends and welcome back to my channel, my little corner of the internet where I share with you how knitting and other fiber crafts have become intertwined into my life. If you're new here, my name is Kristen. I'm the maker behind this little corner of the internet. And if you're returning, welcome back. This is episode 66 of my podcast where I share with you finished objects, works in progress, sometimes some acquisitions. I do have some of those today and just a little fibery project chat. It has been, I just checked, 34 days since my last podcast. So if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I have a little bit of admin as to why I haven't recorded um, as frequently as I had. Um, so I'll go over that first before we dive into finished objects. But as always, if you want to jump around, all of the chapters are linked down below in the description box. So I link to when I start talking about each of the projects. That way you can reference them um, today if you want to skip ahead or if you ever want to come back and you're like, I remember her talking about a specific project. Um, it's all linked with the chapter code so that you can find them pretty easily if there's something you want to reference back to later. So with that, I hope you have something cozy to drink. I'm just drinking water because it's very nice outside today and the house is not necessarily kicking the AC on and sometimes it's a little warm with my recording lights, but I just have water to drink. I hope you have something to work on or if you're doing something else while you listen, I'm glad I can keep you company and we'll just dive right into the admin right up front. So as I mentioned in the beginning, it has been about a little over a month since I last recorded my last episode and that is because I suffered a not suffered, suffered is not the right word. I had an ankle injury. Um, I was rock climbing with some of my co-workers. We were bouldering. And if you don't know, because I've actually got this question quite a lot. So normally when I rock climb, I climb with a rope. And those are like the tall rock climbing walls. And with those, if you ever slip, the rope catches you. You have someone at the bottom holding the other end of the rope. And where I climb, they have these auto... They call them, I don't remember what they're called, but they're these like auto catch systems. So if there's any like tension of someone falling, it catches you and you don't fall. However, when I went rock climbing with my coworkers, a lot of them don't top rope, which is what the tall walls are called. They boulder and boulder is where they're a lot closer to the ground. It's like you're climbing a boulder and there's no rope to catch you. I had never bouldered before I was bouldering for the first time and I fell. I got was getting to the end of a route, which is like the path that you climb. And the last hold was a bit of a stretch for me. And my mentality of I if when I'm top roping, if I reach for something and I slip or I miss, I get caught. So I've kind of gotten that mentality and I didn't I should have just not reached for the last hold, but I did. I did and I slipped and I fell and I was kind of upside down and I just basically fell on my ankle. We ended up going to the doctor and they thought it was just a really bad sprain at first, but asked that I go follow up with an orthopedic. Um, with the orthopedic, I showed him some of the folder, the photos of the bruising that I had in between um, the sprain happening and the time I'd been able to come in to see him. I took photos kind of every day because the bruising was pretty intense. I didn't know my foot could bruise like that and in the places that it did. Um, so based on those photos, he recommended I get an MRI, went back to the orthopedic, and I tore the tendon on both sides of my ankle. So I had to get surgery on my foot and for two weeks I couldn't walk on it. I had a little knee scooter now I am able to bear a little bit of weight. I have like one of those boots and I can kind of walk around my house with the boot. I have a crutch to kind of help aid the weight if I need to. Um, mostly in the house I'm okay and then when we're out and about I still kind of use the scooter because that can be a lot of walking. I really haven't gone out much. We did go to a yarn festival yesterday and I'll be talking about all of that at the end. But I like brought my scooter to that because it's just, you know, I'm recovering. So started PT this week. It's going pretty well. 
I'm not having a ton of pain anymore, which is lovely. The nice thing is, is because of the bruising and my insistence of going to the orthopedic pretty early, the orthopedic was able to catch it pretty early. And it was a good thing we did because I was starting to feel a lot better before the surgery. Like it was still a little tender, but the swelling had gone down and everything. And that's where he was saying a lot of people will, you know, it's still a little sore, but they'll just keep going about daily life, working on it. And that's when they really will mess up their ankle. And luckily, since I was pretty cautious about the fall and got in pretty quickly and like took it seriously, he was able to fix it pretty quickly. And I think that's why I'm not experiencing a ton of pain and a ton like, I didn't lose a lot of strength um, from my PT. She was saying it's pretty good. And, like, compared to some people, like, my range of motion, the starting point isn't as bad as some other people. So I still have about probably at least a month, of month and a half of physical therapy. They're saying I probably will have a little bit more. Um, but with all that to say, that's why I haven't recorded in the last month. So I was just kind of down about it, honestly. And then after the surgery, the bandage was just large and cumbersome. I wouldn't have been able to record really in here. I wasn't feeling like myself. I was just kind of resting and relaxing and I didn't want to talk really. Um, but with that, I have done quite a lot of crafting and making within the last month. So I have a good amount of things to show you today, which is very exciting. Anyway, so that's where I've been for the last month. With that, I will be talking at the end about a trip that we took yesterday to Interweave Yarn Fest, which is in Loveland, Colorado. It's about an hour north of where we live here in Denver. I live in Aurora, so kind of the south side of Denver. Um, but I do have a pretty skein of yarn that you guys would, might want to stick around for. So make sure you stick around for that at the end of the episode. So, we will move into the things that I have finished since I last recorded. I have some exciting progress to show you. So, the first finished object that I have to show you is my small fry scarf, which I test knit for Samantha Guerin. This pattern is now out, but I'm so excited it's done. So, this is my little scarf. So it's a small scarf reminiscent of like the Sophie shawl, the Sophie scarf, where it's these little scarves that just wrap around your neck. It has this really fun ribbing like texture. However, this is very similar to my For Keeps cardigan where it's not a ribbing texture made with purling. It's just knit stitches and slip stitches to make that little texture. But, it's just a cute little scarf that you can wrap around, tighten it up. I'm still figuring out exactly how to wear it, but something like that. Nice and cute. Something for when it's not super cold out, but you do want your neck to be warm. I like it because it does keep your neck warm, but I can make sure it's not like squeezing my neck because I don't like things super tight. So like you can see, I have a little bit of room there. And that's my small fry scarf. I use Patagonia Organic Merino. It's a sport weight woolen spun yarn. And this was the colorway Cinnamon. I ended up having two skeins of this because I knit my coworker from my last job a cowl for our Secret Santa and I bought two skeins. But I ended up only using one for her cowl so I had another skein of this left over. And so I used it to make my scarf. So now we have matching little neck attire, I guess would be the word. Um, matching, but not matching, but the same yarn. Overall, I used 86 grams of this sport weight yarn. So it didn't even use a full skein, which is really, really lovely. And I think it's really cute. What's really nice about the woolen spun yarn too, is it's like so lightweight but it's very warm. I think this yarn is nice and it's not scratchy, at least not to me, especially in like my neck area. The only thing is, is I don't think this woolen spun yarn has a ton of drape. I've seen some of the other samples that 
um, some of the other test knitters, test knitters posted. I highly recommend you go check out that hashtag, but mine just is a little more firm, not as drapey as some of the others, but I think still looks very nice. I think it goes really well with my little blue shirt here. But yeah, I loved making this. It only took me 20 days to knit and I wasn't working on it religiously. But let me check my other notes. Yeah, the colorway of my organic merino was the colorway cinnamon. And like I said, I used 86 grams. I followed the pattern exactly. I'm pretty sure it was a US 3 needle. So pretty nice gauge. I think it looks really nice. So I definitely would make another one of these again. Especially since it's a sport weight, I think it's pretty versatile. So I did do, like I said, a sport weight yarn for this. I do also think you could do a fingering weight with a mohair pretty easily. It just might, it might end up being a little bigger. But the nice thing is, is you knit from one of these tips. You keep increasing. And Samantha has in the pattern like the depth of how long that widest point should be. So if anything, you could knit until you get to that width and then start decreasing pretty easily. And you wouldn't, you could kind of modify it. Or you could knit to the same number of um, stitches and then it might just be a little bit bigger if it's more closer to a DK or a little looser gauge. But yeah, I really like it. I would definitely knit another one of these. And I love test knitting for Samantha. It's always a great experience. I think her patterns are extremely well written. The pattern does have written and charted instructions. I use mostly the charted instructions and the pattern is pretty memorizable once you get going. It took me a little while to figure out exactly what was happening, but once you know what's kind of going on, you don't necessarily need to be super glued to the pattern. The main thing for me was knowing when to do my increases. So I did have a row counter to help me remind me when to do an increase, but otherwise I wasn't reading row by row. I think if you had one of like the twice tiered sheet markers or a row counter of some sort and you just remember like I need to increase on this many rows every time, you it's pretty easy to memorize and to take on the go. So I ended up doing that a lot. I took this to dinner a couple times to work on. It's nice to pick up and put down. It was a pattern I did need to look at my knitting because of the slip stitches and I was reading my knitting a lot to knit it. But I think it was really, it was a lovely, lovely project. So highly recommend it. I plan to make another one. I don't know when, but I think this is a nice scarf, like for gifts too, even, especially because it can be done with one skein. I could do it in sport weight. I could do it in fingering weight. I could do it in DK. So I think this would be a really lovely kind of gift project. If you want something with a little more interest than like the Sophie scarf. But yeah. That is my small fry scarf by Samantha Guerin. So I have one more finished object to show you before we move on to works in progress. And this one might be a little bit of a surprise. But I finished my Attune Shawl by Andrea Mallory. And I am so excited that this is done. So I started this project last July and I finished it at the end of March. But here it is. So this is a two color shawl where you alternate sides with fisherman's rib on this side and brioche on the other side. And then you have a garter stitch border. So my main colors were Hedgehog Fibers, Merino DK in the colorway Pet Rock. And then on this side you can see on the other side of the brioche. This was some of my hand spun. It's Malabrigo Nube in the colorway Montesa, I believe. I'm not exactly sure I remember. But I have a good amount of my hand spun left. And I had a lot of this pet rock from Hedgehog Fibers to begin with. So overall, I have two um, yarn labels for the Hedgehog Fibers Pet Rock. So that would tell me I used two and I didn't use all 200 grams of my contrast color. However, in my stash I started with five skeins of Pet Rock and now I only f have like two and leftover. So that would equate to I used three in this. So 
I need to weigh this and see kind of what my full weight is and I'll update it on my project page and here to see if I can kind of decipher how much uh, yarn I actually used but this is kind of what this shawl looks like so I did make a little bit of a modification to this overall I really like the color of this and I really like this like shape I think this works really well with I have pretty narrow shoulders but I think this is a nice shape so I followed the pattern pretty much exactly it has recommendations of how long to do this beginning section before you do the garter and in the pattern it is between 20 or 25 repeats for her smaller large size based on the samples I went with the 20 repeats for the small smaller shape and then when you get to the garter it's also supposed to be 20 repeats I only did nine repeats of the pattern because two reasons one I think this is a good depth I probably could have done maybe three more repeats but I was also just kind of done and I'm not sad with the length at all I think it's a great length I also knew with blocking because my main color was a super wash and because it's brioche and both of those are notorious for growing when you block them so I didn't want it to block and then become huge so I also thought this length like I did about half of this and I feel like another like 10 repeats would have looked so long for this like outside texture and I think right now it looks like a nice proportion to the larger section so I'm glad I only did nine repeats those are the main changes I made otherwise I use the same US 4 needle my gauge is pretty similar and I'm really happy with how it turned out um, I haven't weaven all my ends in yet <laughs> and I still need to take nice finished object photos but that is how my shawl looks I think the juxtap juxtaposition of how the fisherman's rib looks where you get kind of like that two row and one row repeat of the colors and then the brioche where you really get the main color on one side and the contrast color on the other side is really really cool I'm really proud of how my hand spun looks in this I think it is kind of amazing how when you're spinning you can really see the inconsistencies of like when something is thick and when something is thin but overall when it's knit up and then after blocking I really think my hand spun looks really nice I think it really shines there are some blips that you can see like I think especially in like the center spine like this little stitch here like it's really fuzzy comparative to some of the others but overall I think it looks really nice. I'm really happy I did this project even though it was on my needles for such a long time. It was just one that kind of sat and stayed with me and when I started working on it again and started working on this garter border I was so close I was like I'm just gonna power through and finish for the end of the month and I finished before the end of March which was really really nice sometimes just those end of month goals can be really helpful and I did do there's a stretchy bind off um, in the pattern so you can see it makes a really nice V bind off, which I think looks really, really nice. I thought it was going to be an I-cord bind off, but I liked that it was this bind off. It was a lot quicker. So yeah, overall this either used two or three skeins with my hand spun being a 200 gram skein. Um, I didn't use all of it, but I did use either two or three skeins of my contrasting color so like I said I will hope editing Kristen will have put that on the screen but I'm excited to have this I think this will be something in the spring I won't necessarily wear like wrapped around my 
neck how I showed it earlier, but I do think it is a lovely shawl to kind of wear like this. I think it's a really nice shape. It kind of goes from my neck down to my elbow on both sides and it's not too long overall. So I think just kind of like when it's a little chilly at night or if I just want something to keep my shoulders warm while we're like sitting upstairs and reading. Can you see it down the back? I think this is definitely a way I will wear this and another reason why I didn't want it too big. I think Honestly, I think another 10 rows of garter would have just been a little too big for me. So I do have pretty narrow shoulders, so that is something to keep in mind. But that's one thing that's nice about like top-down kind of shawls is you can kind of stuff them whenever you like. I really like the juxtaposition of how the hand spun looks. I think it's so beautiful. I'm really happy with this. So I already kind of have plans of making a cinnabar shawl, which is another Andrew Mallory shawl. Same kind of idea where you have two different textures kind of going on. And that was what I was initially going to knit, but then Andrea started this Attune shawl, spin it to knit at Make Along last year, so I ended up doing this one. But the cinnabar is definitely another shawl that is on my list. Also, this shape just fits really nicely over my shoulders. I almost think I prefer this to the wrapped around the neck. So yeah, that is my Attune shawl on the needles for the majority of a year. However, I'm very excited to have it done. I think this is going to get a lot of use this spring for like an over the shoulder drape. And then when fall comes, a nice jacket companion is what came to my head. So yeah, my tune shawl. A very close to a year long project, but it's now done. Alrighty, so now we will move into my works in progress. So my first work in progress is basically a finished object, but not quite and this can is an interesting discussion when do you consider a project finished um because this one i'm considering not finished yet for this episode but it's pretty much on the cusp of being finished so this is my traveler hoodie by andrea mallory and i'm so close to being done um here's the thing all the knitting is done. I finished the knitting on this this morning. However, I have not done my final block. And I feel like with this project, it really needs to block to like tie the bow. So I'm knitting the size three in this. However, with my gauge, I'm gonna get close to a 49 and a half inch bust. And it's really hard to show because it is a navy blue but here's my hoodie. So the last time I was working on this, I think I was working on the front or the back, but I have finished everything. I have knit the hood, which is made with like, it's such an ingenious technique. It's very similar to a heel. So you knit back and forth and then you start doing short rows and then you resolve all the short rows, very similar shaping to a heel where you kind of move in knit a couple rows and then you move out but it makes such a nice hood shape I have also knit both sleeves but if you look at the sleeve it looks really really short and that's because with the blocking it will really stretch out versus right now it's really cinched in so right now I feel like it looks like a kind of like a grubby caterpillar <laughs> versus once it's done it'll really stretch out and it'll be really reminiscent to see how the body has this more relaxed and you can kind of see the stockinette rows between the reverse stockinette rows versus right now on the sleeve you really just see the reverse stockinette rows but I finished both sleeves and I finished the hood 
The only reason I'm calling this not finished is because I have put the cuffs on barber cord because I'm going to block this, stretch the sleeves out, I'm going to retry it on after I try, um, after it dries to make sure that the sleeve length is what I want. I haven't measured my arm length to know. I have tried it on. I've kind of like tugged it to stretch it out. And right now it kind of hits right at my wrist. So I think with blocking, it'll be like a nicer like mid hand kind of shape. But I did make a modification on the sleeve and I think this was one of the only modifications I made. I'll talk about the other one in a second. But I did do more of a decrease on the sleeve cuff than what's called for. So in the pattern, I knit the size three width wise, but for the sleeve length, I knit to the size four. So I ended up picking up the sleeve number for, sli for the size four, but then I decreased down to the size three. So I had some extra decreases. I decreased a little bit faster and then right before the cuff, you weren't supposed to do any additional decreases, but I decreased out another 20 stitches because I wanted a really tight cuff for the hoodie. I think tight cuffs are pretty common on hoodies, so you can kind of see how that's really snug on my cuff, really snug on my wrist, the cuff is. I feel like a nice tight cuff is what looks really well and I've just noticed in the sweaters that I've knit the ones that are more open the ones that don't hug my wrist I don't like I don't like them as much I find that they get in the way I kind of just like want to bunch them up so I'm really trying to be mindful of that when I knit future garments <laughs> I do think the sleeve right now looks so funny I think it looks so short like look at how <laughs> I think it looks like massive decreases very quickly I think it looks so short when it actually is gonna be a pretty decent length I just think it looks pretty hilarious so you probably want to know what I knit this in I knit this in knit picks wool of the Andes in the sport weight it is the colorway midnight heather which is why it does not show up on this screen very well it is a true navy blue a dark navy blue and for the drawstring i used a contrasting color of knit picks wool of the andes that i had in my stash i had two skeins of this this is sapphire heather and this is worsted weight but i thought for the I cord, it would work well, and I think it did really, really well. So for this, I did not want to knit this I cord, so I ended up ordering a cord smith. So this is an I cord maker. So you kind of like wrap your yarn over this, pull it off, wrap, pull off, and it makes an I cord. So that is how I made this 40 some odd inch I cord. I would not change it. I have also used this to do like an I-cord bind off where I pick up one stitch and put it on, knit them over, pick up one. I'm in love with this tool. So if you like I-cords but don't necessarily love knitting them, I recommend this tool. I will definitely be using this often. So the other modification that I made is I did just add some vertical bust starts for the front of the sweater. So how I did that is I just kind of tried it on as I went. I added eight stitches total, which added up to be about an inch and a half on each side um, of my bust total, and then knit for a few inches and decreased them out. And I did them about a third of the way in. So I just put markers, did some increases. I think I did every other row till I had increased four times on each side, eight stitches total, total, knit two or three inches. I kind of basically just kept trying it on until the apex of my bust was done. And then I started the decreases to get back to my original stitch count. And I just did the decreases the same way, decreasing 
every other row until I decrease four times on both sides. The nice thing with the vertical bust starts is it doesn't break up any like row patterning because you're just adding a few extra stitches and it's not adding extra rows on the front. So it's not like I have extra ridges on the front than I do for the back. I think that's basically it. So my next plans are to block this, lay it out to dry, try it on, see how my sleeves fit, and then I'm going to do a sewn bind off for the sleeves. And that's basically it. That's my, my traveler hoodie. It's so close to being done. I like powered through the rest of the sleeve this morning. I knit probably half of the second sleeve on our drive yesterday to the yarn show. And honestly, it's what I've been working on. I have been putting so much time into this because I felt so close to the end that I wanted it to be done. I also did take the length measurements and I did what I wanted them to be. I measured one of my favorite sweaters in my closet and knit to that length. So right now you can see the sleeves are basically at my wrist. Which is funny because they look so short but I have short arms. And that's kind of the length. So I am wearing high-waisted pants, and the body has been blocked. I blocked it many times throughout. But yeah, I think the sleeves definitely need a little bit of a block. I do have some, like, fabric extra here. And I don't know if that's because maybe this is pulling, or maybe I could have knit my sleeves a little shorter. Or like the length a little shorter but I'm really proud I think the bus starts you know the length is basically the same on the front and the back and the hood is so roomy I think that the hood is pretty like the apex is pretty far back so like it's pretty snug and like it feels nice and like, it kind of knocks out some of your periphery, which is kind of nice if you really pull it back. Otherwise, you can kind of, you know, leave it forward. But yeah, that's my traveler hoodie. I'm excited to get this blocked because then I can wear it this spring. Again, another, like, as they're cool nights, I think it will be nice. But you can kind of see as I've been moving around moving my arms you can see how this has started to shift up so I think with blocking it'll be nice and kind of pull like that's pretty stretched out so I think I'll probably be close to what it is but yeah that is my traveler hoodie it is very warm this room is very warm so I'm gonna take it off <sighs> but it's so cute I Definitely could see myself making another one of these. I don't know if I'd make another hoodie, but the crew neck could be a lot of fun. The thing is, is I still have five extra skeins of this yarn. I'm pretty sure I ordered five extra based on the measurement or the yardages given in the pattern. And I still have five whole skeins left over. And then these are the two partial skeins that I have left over. So the reason why I have two different partials is because technically the hood is a different dye lot than the body. However, I really can't tell. And the thing is, is I'm pretty sure cameras pick up the difference in dye lots a lot more than, like if you can't see it in person, you can normally see it on a camera lens. But I think they look the same. So I probably have about 300 grams total left over of this yarn. Um, so honestly, I'll probably be de-stashing some of it because I really don't care to keep extra skeins after I finish a project. So in my next episode, I'll show another full try-on. I'll have full measurements of how many grams I used 
and everything like that. Um, but I do know for this, for the I cord, I use nine grams. So that's an easy stash buster as well. So I'll probably just pop this back in my stash, consider it a full skein. I have two, so I'll probably, I'm saving it to make a hat. Um, I bought that as a contrasting color potential for Shane's Montrealer that I did, but the red looked better. So it's nice because I like the little accent pop here. But yeah, that is my traveler hoodie. I think it's so cute. All right, I'm taking it off because it's hot. So the next project that I have to show you is a new cast on to you since I last recorded. I am making the Stockholm Slipover, which is a pattern by Petite Knit. And this was a little bit of a spur of the moment cast on. So I'm just checking my notes here. I am making the 2XL size. However, my gauge was a little bit different. So I, the pattern, the size would normally be 49 and a half inches. However, it's going to be closer to 47.6 inches in my finished garment, which for me fits into that size range of about five inches of positive ease here. It'd be a little bit of negative ease at the bust. However, I did add some vertical, ver vertical, <laughs> vertical bust starts in this as well to add another inch and a half. Well, I added eight stitches and I get five stitches an inch, so about an eight an inch and a half of room at the bust, so it just wouldn't pull too much. And this is where I'm at. I love the color so much. So you start and you knit the back piece until you get to the bottom of your armhole. You do do a little bit of shaping for the bottom of the armhole. Then you turn around, you pick up the stitches at the shoulder seams, you knit down to do all this neckline shaping on one side, then the other, and then you combine to knit in the round, continue down doing some increases for the front armhole, and then you're joining in the round, and then it's just a giant muscle burra, just stock knit in the round, just easy, easy knitting. So after I joined at the armholes, that's when I did my increases for the bust shaping. I did four increase rounds again, eight stitches increased total, about a third of the way in. Actually, I think I did about a quarter of the way in on this one from the underarm. Just did some increases. It's right here. I did some increases, knit for about two inches, then decrease them back out. Um, the pattern does have waist shaping, so I did do a waist decrease about three inches from the underarm, and then again. And now it literally is no more shaping, just knitting around and around and around until I'm ready for the ribbing. I decided I do want this to be a little bit cropped. So the last time I tried it on from this marker, I wanted about five inches more knitting before I did the ribbing. My goal with this is I want to have it to wear like over long sleeve t-shirts or short sleeve t-shirts with like my high waisted jeans or other pants to wear. So I still have ribbing to add at the neckline and ribbing to add at the underarm. But overall, I think this is gonna be super cute. So let me show you the yarns I'm using. So this is Leading Men Fiber Arts. This is their BFL base. I actually got this from Interweave Yarn Fest two years ago and it's been sitting in my stash and I finally used it. So this is their Spotlight base. The colorway is Marauder. It's an 80% Superwash BFL and a 20% nylon. I love BFL, so I've been wanting to use this. And I think it's just a really deep maroon that's really beautiful. Then I'm holding it with Barocco Aerial. This is the colorway Plum. 
but it's definitely like a maroon. It's not really purple. <laughs> anyway, I think they pair really beautifully together. I had three skeins total for this, so 1,200 yards, and I had four skeins of this, which each of these are 65% mohair, 35% silk, and they're each 284 yards. So closer to 300, so four is close to 1,200. So I'm pretty similar on both of them. I'm just about to start the third skein of this, and this is still my second skein of the Marauder. I really don't know if I will break into that third skein because I am cropping this a little from what Petite Knit has in the pattern. But let me here quickly see if I can find my barber cords and we'll try it on. What do you think? So the reason I wanted to make a slip over, I've never made a vest before. I've never really worn vests before, but it's been in the back of my mind percolating like, like I could see the merit of having one. I think I just kept having a vision of putting this over a long sleeve shirt. Also like seeing Crea Bea's new vest over like a short sleeve shirt. I think they're really cute. I think it's a nice way to like keep you warm while keeping your you know, it's not like a full sweatshirt to keep you fully warm. And so I just really wanted to make one. And I think I was watching the grocery girls and they had made a vest. And I was just like, I'm going to do it. I've had this like need in my brain. I was like, I really want to start a raglan sweater. I want something easy. But a raglan was just like, there's just so much work with the increases. And I wanted it like, to be around and around in the body. A raglan is not that much work. It's not that. It was just the setup. I don't know. For some reason, the sleeves of this, it just clicked. I just had like that poof, brainstorm moment. I'm going to cast on a vest. I know exactly what yarn I'm going to use. I think this color will work great in my wardrobe. And I cast on. I did this watch like that weekend. I did it on three different needle sizes. Picked my favorite. I think I ended up doing the bottom one here. I am using who knows what size. It's a fingering weight and mohair held together, so closer to a DK, and I'm using a US 7. And my stitch gauge is about five stitches an inch. Technically, if you really want the decimals, it's 4.94 stitches an inch, and that's in my project page as well, but. That's the technical, which you should use for doing the math. But this is what it looks like on. Obviously, I would not wear it with this blue shirt. That's a little too Americana for me. But I think the neckline is really nice. And I'll shift so you can see the bottom. These are kind of high-waisted pants, and this is kind of my goal length, is I want to do another two inches of ribbing and then two inch, or two inches of body, two inches of ribbing. But the armholes right now are still pretty deep. I think with the ribbing, it'll bring it in a little bit, but since it's going over other shirts, I think it's a nice flattering fit right now. And if you look, at where my front and back is, I think my slight adjustments of increases for my bust shaping worked. I don't think it's pulling too much at the front, which I think is really nice. I still have a little bit of room on both sides, but it's definitely not oversized. I think it's a really pretty color. And I think the combination of this mohair and this yarn are working beautifully together. The thing that I am liking a lot about this Barocco Ariel is it's not a super fuzzy mohair. It's not, it doesn't have a ton coming off of it. It's also a pretty affordable mohair, but I haven't had too many instances of trouble with these and not knitting together. It's honestly making a really lovely fabric. I think the color is beautiful. 
And I'm excited just to have this. I think it'll work really well with jeans, over t-shirts, just a way to keep you warm. And it's a nice experiment, honestly. Um, like I said, this yarn has been sitting in my stash for at least two years because I bought these three skeins the last time I went to Interweave Yarn Fest. Um, I had plans of making a t-shirt with it. Kept hemming and hawing because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the superwash because the superwash does grow. However, holding it with the mohair kind of eliminates that fact I didn't have much growing um, pre-blocking to post-blocking. And I just wanted to cast on something fun. And with the mohair at making it like a nice looser gauge, it's pretty easy to knit. Now that it's just stockinette in the round, I've really been working on it in meetings. I can just kind of keep it in my lap. I can work on it. It's not a ton of thought. And yeah, it's been really fun to work on. Um, I've not had any issues with the understanding the pattern. I think it's written, written very well. And yeah, I'm excited to have it done. Um, because it is mohair, I don't know how much wear I wear. I will get out of it this spring. But who knows? Maybe on like a stormy chilly day over like a t-shirt might get some wear. Otherwise I'll have it for when the days start cooling down in the fall, which will be nice to have. But yeah, that is my new cast on that you haven't seen. My Stockholm Slipover by Petite, Petite Knit. Sorry, words are hard today. So then we'll move into my last work in progress. And this is just an easy project for me to have. I'm just working on a vanilla sock to have with me. So this has just been my sock that is in my bag so that I have it for doctor's appointments when I'm being chauffeured around, waiting for my PT sessions to start. It's just a sock. I started this I'm not exactly sure. Very close to when I went to my first orthodontist appointment because I remember posting it, not orthodontist, my orthopedic appointment because I remember posting working on it while waiting to hear. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a two by two rib. I did 60 rounds for the leg, a shadow wrap heel, and now I'm working on the foot. I'm doing this on a US zero. I'm doing 56. I'm doing 56 stitches because these are a pair of socks for myself. And the colorway I'm using is it's a yarnable color. It's one of my favorites that I've gotten. It's called Flannel Sheets. It's on the plush sock base, which is an 85 super wash merino and 15% nylon. And this is what it looks like in the skein. I think it looks very different skeined up versus knit up, which is kind of cool. I might just have more blue on the outside of this skein than I do in the center. But I think what's really cool about how these are knitting up is it's kind of micro striping with this dark purple. At first I was worried because it was pooling a lot in the cuff. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking I was going to get like that purple down the back. But once I switched over from the ribbing into the leg, it really is like a nice repeat through. And I think it looks really cool. So these are definitely gonna be like fall inspired socks. I love the colorway so much. It's not necessarily aesthetically on brand for spring right now, but I do really like the colors. So I've just been working on these on and off. Like I said, they've really been my out and about knitting. Haven't worked on them a ton. Um, like at home, a ton of hours. They're just my backup socks. Um, yeah, just really liking working on the colorway. It's good to have a pair of socks. We haven't gone to a movie or anything where I've needed that knitting. And like yesterday when we were riding in the car, I brought my hoodie because I was so close and I wanted to work on it. So that's that. Otherwise, I have been doing a couple of 100-day challenges. 
Andrea Mowry started kind of on April 1st, like a 100 day knitting challenge and a 100 day spinning challenge. And for both of those, I'm kind of doing my own spin on them. So for my 100 day knitting challenge, I'm trying to spend 15 minutes every day working on my Cozy Memories blanket. This blanket, I am putting leftovers of every fingering weight superwash yarn into. Does that make sense? If I finish a sock or another project that uses fingering weight superwash yarn, something that's not gonna felt, I'm putting it in this blanket. And so I've been trying to spend 15 minutes on it every day. We'll say I have missed a few days, but some of the days I've worked more than 15 minutes, so I'm calling it all pretty equal. <laughs> When I started back at work this past week, kind of threw off some of my groove. So I've got to re-figure, i got to figure out my routine for the mornings. Yeah, it's been a struggle. But I have done quite a few squares, more than I have in quite a while. And it's bringing a lot of joy. So let me move this needle and I'll show you what squares I have done quickly. So every square with a marker is one I've worked on since I last started this challenge. So I finished this purple one, did this green, a self-striping, another green, this self-striping, this blue, this self-striping, and now I've started another. It's actually a self-striping. So yeah, I've just been trying to work on this 15 minutes every day. Um, some days I get more done and I really want to push to finish a square. And some days I do the 15 minutes and I'm like, nope, I am done. And I put it away. Um, I still have, I counted the other day, all of my little leftovers live in this bag. Whenever I finish a fingering weight project, I wind off five grams of the yarn, throw it in here, and then I've just been pulling randomly. The only time I don't use a color that I randomly pull is like if I pull a green, that would be next to this green. Try not to put colors beside each other that are the same. But I love looking at the result. And I've really much accepted the fact that this is a very much a long-term project. But if I could catch up in the 15 minutes every day for the 100 days of what's in here, that would be really nice. I think I counted the other day and I have somewhere between 30 to 40 colors still in here. So I would like to catch up. But it's been bringing a lot of joy and it's nice to just do the 15 minutes and then after 15 minutes, I'm like, no more. I don't have to. Um, and then after I finish each square, I am putting the leftovers of the five grams into magic knot balls. This is a magic knot ball of non-self-striping, and this is a magic knot ball of self-striping. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with those magic knot balls when I'm done. I have ideas of maybe, maybe, very much a maybe, doing a like crochet stripe blanket. However, we're just gonna keep collecting them for now. <laughs> I have enough uh, commitments at the moment and I'd like to just catch up and then maybe I'll decide later when I get some inspiration. So I've also been trying to do 15 minutes every day of spinning. And again, I still have missed a few days. However, I have, you know, I've worked on it. Um, some days I've done a little bit more, so I'm calling it caught up. I am posting every day on my Instagram, kind of my progress, so if you'd like to see, and it's kind of cool to see, you can go to my Instagram highlights and you can click and you can kind of see the progress every day. It's kind of cool. Um, I think so, you might not. Um, so spinning, I have been trying to do 15 minutes every day. So before the challenge started, I had finished this one bobbin and then yesterday I plied it. So this is a three ply of Viking Fiber Co. One of a kind. It's a Corydale. I did a chain ply because I was lazy and wanted to just spin my initial ply. Um, 
However, I don't think I did a great job. I still need to wind this off and block it, but there are definitely spots in my chain ply that are a lot more curly cue and other places that are a little more knitting yarn. Um, so I definitely have some practice to do on like chain plying. Um, it was really the places where I was pulling the yarn through to start a new chain, I guess, um, where it would really bunch up. So if anyone has any tips on how to get a more even chain ply, I'd really appreciate it. But overall, I really like how the colors look. I think it'll look really cool. Um, and yeah, sometimes I just spin to spin because I just want to practice. And I really enjoyed working with this fiber from Viking Fiber. I think the colors look really cool. And I'm excited to see it once it's soaked and dry. Maybe some of this bunching will even out. I don't know if it will. Some places it looks really nice and then other places it's like really bunched up. So this was also my first time chain plying on my e-spinner. So I don't know if it's just because I wasn't able to control the speed as much when I was struggling to pull the yarn through that it was bunching up. Um, but it's also only like the second time I've chain plied. I've chain plied a few times with leftovers when I have like one leftover from a bobbin and I'll chain ply that together. Um... This is my first time chain plying an entire four ounces. So, nice learning experience, fun to learn. And I have done all my spinning on my e-spinner because with my ankle injury, treadling is um, not my friend. Not the moment, at least. But I'm getting nice use out of my e-spinner. So then, also for my 100 day of spinning challenge, I started a new spin from fiber that I got from Primrose Fiber Company. I think that's correct. Let me double check. You've probably seen this yarn if you watch Young Folk Knits. Um, it's Primrose Yarn Company, not Primrose Fiber Company. Um, this is the Ozark Dreaming colorway. She showed it, finished on her podcast, and I had to get this. So I got four ounces of Ozark Dreaming on the Merino base. And this has been a dream. There's like absolutely no matting or felting or anything in this fiber from Primrose. So I have no idea how she does that. That's amazing. I don't know if I've ever had a fiber that has like no mats in it. So that's amazing. And I love the colors. This is definitely colors right up my alley dark moody autumnal jewel tone so what i've done with this is i split the four ounces in half and then i split each of those halves into 16 thin strips because i wanted to get this fiber really really thin my goal is basically to spin as thin as possible anytime i spin and I've really been trying to do that on this. I'm getting anywhere from 30 or 40 to 45 wraps per inch. It's really hard to tell sometimes with that little tool because I feel like my single can kind of fit in any of them. So I think it's between 40 and 45. But really enjoying this. This has been resting. I put this aside. I applied that... Um, Viking Fiber Co. and I need to start on the other two ounces, the other half of this so far. So this is two ounces and this is an Ashford Jumbo Bobbin. So you can see like how much more room I could fit on these. I could ply so much. So this is four ounces of plied yarn and it's still not completely full. And this is two ounces of a single. I probably could fit eight ounces on one of these Jumbo Bobbins, which is really nice for combo spins so yeah i did get this color from primrose i got another color i think it was pinot noir i got eight ounces of that from primrose as well um i've been on a little bit of a fiber kick lately it's been a little crazy honestly um i'm not going to show you all the fiber i've gotten <laughs> since um over the last month but it's been quite a bot anyway 
that's all the making I've done. So we will move into the acquisition phase. I'm going to talk a little bit about Interweave Yarn Festival from yesterday. So stick around if you're still interested in that yarn skein that I mentioned earlier in the episode. So as I mentioned, Interweave Yarn Festival is a festival, yarn festival. Technically now it's a maker's festival for beading and yarn. And it takes place in Loveland, Colorado, which is about an hour north of where we live. Um, with the traffic yesterday, it was a little bit longer of a drive because for some reason, everyone on the highways yesterday got into an accident. I think we saw four or five accidents yesterday in the hour drive north and the hour drive south. It was kind of crazy. I feel like everyone from the winter has now gone out and there are just a lot of people on the road yesterday. However, I digress. It takes place in a hotel. Um, there is a fee to get into the marketplace, which is a little bit of a bummer. It is a $20 fee to access the marketplace. However, the person yesterday said it was two for 30. So I was able to get Shane and myself in to the marketplace for $30. I say it's a bummer because there's another yarn festival that's pretty close to here, Estes Park Wool Market, and that festival is a lot bigger, has more vendors, has animals, and that one is free to get into. So, pros and cons. Um, the Interweave Yarn Festival starts on a Wednesday and it goes through Saturday, so there's nothing on Sunday. So Saturday was really the only day we could head down. There are classes the other days and the marketplace is open, but I was mostly just interested in the marketplace. I also think if you decide to do a class, you get access to the marketplace for free. But yesterday there were tons of pretty, pretty things to see. But the first thing I picked up was some fiber from Road Trip Sock Yarn. I love Allie. She goes to Rhinebeck. So please be sure to check her out there. She also mentioned that if you are doing a flock, she's doing a little bit of like a tour, not a tour, a road trip kind of pop-ups up to flock. So check her out as well. But I picked up this fiber from her because I didn't know Allie was dying fiber and I fell in love with this color. So it's just like purples and blues and greens and it has this like tweed in it. It's so soft, it's very cute. And this is the tag. So it's hand dyed, it's 20% South American wool and 20% viscose fiber, four meters per 100 grams. So I think I get four meters of fiber in this 100 grams. So I think it's, this is very spring to me. I like it because there's not a ton of pinks in it, but it's this fun, bright green is really cute. And I think this will be fun to spin up. So that's the first thing I purchased. The second thing I purchased, and this was kind of my goal for the day, is I wanted to find yarn to make the new Skyline Tea. Let me double check. The new Skyline Tea by Tori Yu. It's a t-shirt. It's fingering weight. It has a beautiful like ribbing detail on the sleeve. So I really wanted to find like a summery fiber. If not, I could do a super wash or even a non-super wash fingering weight yarn for this project. So I was kind of on the hunt for that. That was kind of my goal for the day. I um, was looking around, there's so much beautiful stuff. There was a booth where everything was natural dyed and they had beautiful tuft woolens. Another booth with like every color you could imagine. Um, that was Sun Valley Fibers. I'll link the name of the natural dyer here because I cannot remember off the top of my head right now. I'm kind of, as I'm looking around, walking through in my brain, there was a beautiful basket vendor but I finally stumbled upon this booth and this was Nitty Gritty Fiber Arts. 
This is dyed by a man in New Mexico. And it was interesting because he was saying he is the dyer. His wife doesn't do like anything with fiber arts, but she was bending down the show in Albuquerque and he was here in the show in Loveland, but she had help down there and then he was here for this show. So this is a fingering weight yarn. It's from Nitty Gritty Fiber Arts. This is the soft linen base. So it is 25% linen, 51% baby alpaca, and 24% Tessa silk. It's 100 grams, 437 yards. I needed about 1,200 yards total for this shirt. So three skeins. So I bought this beautiful linen alpaca silk blend. I think it's going to be perfect for a summer garment. And with the alpaca, they'll be beautifully drapey. I love the little like linen flex pulling through and also it's like a gorgeous green so I love it um he had a couple different colors in this and he said this was a new base for them they also had a cotton merino base that I was also tempted by but very excited for this the color I got is olive new mexican three skeins very reasonably priced for this kind of base and the colorway is just so beautiful so honestly because my traveler is like almost done I plan to cake this up and swatch for this skyline tee like today so that is my main purchase that I was like looking for what I wanted for this fiber festival and I'm so excited to have found such a beautiful base I feel like it's really hard to find cotton or linen or other like summery bases that are hand dyed so when I saw this and it was in a color that I liked I was like that that's what I want I was really trying to do like one loop around not buying anything and this was like finding his booth was basically the end of my first the first lap and I was like there were only four skeins of this color left and I know there's a chance that it could have not sold. However, I was like, that's what I want. I found what I was looking for. So I bought it on my first lap. But on my second lap around, I was able to stop back at Greenwood Fiberworks, who is a local dyer to where I live. Um, and there, they had so much yarn, so many colors but I really wanted to stop in because they have gorgeous roving. So I looked around a lot. I looked at the BFL, but I finally, I could not turn away from this color. I, I rolled it up beautifully and then I bumped it apart. So this is 100% Falkland and this is the color. It's so pretty. It looks a little more red on screen. It's a little more brown and green and dark blue I love it so much this is the color outlaw I loved it on this face what I was a little hesitant about is I really wanted a BFL because I love spinning BFL and this was Falkland and I couldn't remember if I really like spinning Falkland or not I can't remember I don't remember if I've spun it before I know I have but I don't remember the experience. Um, I know Polworth is one that I'm like, eh, a little more on the fence about. So I think Falkland will be fine. But it just looked so good, the color on this base, that I was like, I'm just gonna get it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I just spin to spin, and it's such a beautiful color, and I'm so excited for this. Um, and then as I was checking out, they let me know that Greenwood Fiberworks is starting a fiber club and I really like a lot of their colors so that is extremely tempting. So I'm going to look into that. We shall see. But I love this colorway so much. So it's a very different vibe from this one that I bought from Allie of Road Trip Sock Yarn. This one's honestly a little bit out of my comfort zone but 
really wanted to support her and I really liked these colors. They just feel very, they feel like me but a brighter version of me, something for spring. Versus this is like, I'm really trying to embrace the dark and moody and I feel like this is that. So, very excited to spin this. It's really soft. I love fiber. Fiber's nice because it's a little cheaper than hand dyed skeins and you get more hours of fun. You have to spin it and then you can knit it. So it's just like so much time for your money. So that's that. And then I stopped at Leading Men Fiber Arts, which if you recall, that is what I'm knitting my Stockholm slipover out of. And I wanted to grab something for you and for me from their booth. So, and this is where it kind of bit me in the butt. Um, I found this color. This is the Koi Pond color. And it's on their intermission bait, or the Showstopper, Showstopper Base Intermission, which is a 50 gram skein. They had one skein of this colorway in 100 grams, and I was like, I'm gonna do my loop and then I'll come back. It was gone. However, they have these 50 gram skeins and I wanted to get this to make a pair of socks. So I know I can get a sock out of a 50 gram skein. So it saved me a little bit of money. And I also grabbed a Showstopper Mini to hold with this. So this is for me, the colorway Koi Pond. And then the mini skein is Shadow in the Trees. I think these are gonna be a really fun, summery sock. I love these, I'm so excited. So I did get those. This is the Leading Men label and it's a 50 gram skein. 231 yards, 75% superwash, merino, 25% nylon. And that's the Koi Pond colorway. And then I picked up a skein for one of you. So I had Shane pick out one of the intermission 50 gram skeins as a color for you guys. And he picked out this color. So this is the colorway that somewhere, also a 50 gram skein, fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's a really fun colorway. Shane is always drawn to really bright and fun colors. So I hope you like this. I talked to the men at the stall and they said that this is very much a variegated colorway. And so they helped me pick out a contrasting mini because I was struggling. And so we picked out this bright green to go with this bright color. So it kind of picks up on this bright green here, but there are these really fun speckles. And this mini is called Beanstalk. Also on the Showstopper base, 20 grams. So overall, it's gonna be 70 grams total. So, as a thank you for you guys coming back, supporting me, always being there for me, I will be mailing this to one of you. So if you'd like, please leave a comment down below. Um, we will use the keyword. We're just gonna go with spring. We're gonna go with spring. So leave a comment with the word spring and just let me know something about spring that you want to share. You can talk about your knitting for spring, um, what else you're doing in spring. I know I'm spending a lot of time trying to get my garden together. I've started my seedlings, seedlings inside. We have to like build a garden bed, so that's another big project. So just leave a comment with the word spring. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well. And I will announce it in my next video. I will say your name and your comments here. So if anyone responds to you in the comments saying you won, you didn't, don't give away any personal information. I will not be asking you to pay anything to receive this. And I'll announce it in the next episode and then you will contact me at my email. So if you're interested, leave a comment down below. 
I hope you enjoy these colors. I know it's a little bright and fun, but I hope it's something you will like. And it's just a thank you for supporting me and supporting this channel. And little, little gifts like this are able to happen from my Ko-Fi members. They help support, you know, the postage and the cost of buying this kind of stuff. So if you'd like to help support the channel and these little gifts, you can go over to Ko-Fi and do a one-time gift or a multiple month membership. All those proceeds go to covering the shipping and buying little gifts, things like this. So as always, thank you to my Ko-Fi supporters. It really means so much, helps, helps buy these little gifts. So I hope you guys enjoy. I have a ton of Fiber Fest that I plan to go through in the upcoming months. There's the Estes Park one here in June that I plan to go to. We are planning to head to Flock in August and we're planning to head to Wisconsin Sheep and Wool in September. And at each of those I plan to pick up a little gift, kind of depending on what I can afford to send to you guys. So as always, thank you for watching. I know this one was a little chatty. <laughs> I had a lot to talk about for sure, a month of making to catch you up on, and that's not even all the acquisitions that I've gotten in the past month. I just had to trim it down, just show you the acquisitions from Interweave. Um, I really plan to be with those three Fiber Fests coming up. My goal is to use from Stash as much as possible, and then acquisitions at these Fiber Festivals. That's kind of the plan. Anyway. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for coming back and thanks for watching if you're a new viewer as well. Please like the video if you did. Subscribe if you'd like to um, be notified when I get these future videos. I'll pop up in your feed. You can hit the bell if you want to know as soon as I post because then you won't miss an episode. But otherwise, I'm going to go block this traveler hoodie so that way I can get the arms bound off. And I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I will see you guys again in a few weeks. Happy spring if you're in the northern hemisphere. Happy fall if you're moving in in the northern or the southern hemisphere. And thank you as always for watching. I'll see you guys again very soon. Bye!